All right, hello, welcome back. We've got some interesting chemistry lined up today. And when I say interesting, I mean terrifying and awful. But you know me, I can't stay away from a good challenge. Um, what we're gonna do is make sulfur chlorides. We're not actually gonna bother about separating the sulfur dichloride from the sulfur monochloride in this synthesis today. So I'm just gonna be referring to it as sulfur chloride. Because there really is two distinct chemicals and you could make either one of them. But we're just going to make a mixture of the, the two and that, that'll be fine for our purposes. The challenge with this synthesis, apart from the fact that the end product is kind of a vile substance, the challenge is that we have to do multiple things at once. We have to generate chlorine, we have to heat the sulfur, we have to distill the sulfur, we have to keep it all dry all at the same time. Which is fine, it just requires a lot of glassware which I happen to be lucky enough to have, I think, enough glassware to do this quite well. <laughs> enough glassware clean as well, actually, perhaps. I'm not going to spend too much more time explaining. I'm actually just going to go set up the glassware and see what it looks like before we charge it with reagents to make sure we've actually got enough glassware to do what I want to do. All right, here we are. A lot of glassware. It's a little bit of overkill. Oh, these, this bright yellow tubing, it looks like it's like a chlorine tube in a sense because it's bright yellow, but it's not a chlorine resistant tube or anything. It's it's probably going to um, perish under the chlorine. So we're kind of using as, you know, disposable tubing in a sense. Why is it yellow? I'm not sure. It's just in my tubing stash and I'm using it because it looks cool and no other reason. Most tubing goes yellow under chlorine anyway, so I wanted to know what the yellow tubing would go even more yellow or would it just get yet less yellow? I'm not sure and the condenser water's green because it looks cool. <laughs> Real science here. All the other chemicals I need in this setup, I'll do that right now. Three, two, one. <laughs> yep, easy. So we got 51 grams of TCCA in there. We've got concentrated hydrochloric. They react together to form chlorine. It goes through this tube, it goes through this. There's uh, quite a generous amount of sulfuric acid here. Sulfuric acid will pull any water out of that gas stream. Chlorine will bubble up, come through here, through this yellow tube come into the sulfur. The sulfur needs to be molten. So that's what we've got to have the heating here. I've just started heating now. Ideally that tube would go into the sulfur, but there's not a whole heap of sulfur. We don't need heaps and heaps of this chemical. I'm trying not to overdo it. Um, that heats up and then what happens is this will be above the boiling point of the sulfur chlorides and they'll come through, hopefully, up this side arm into the condenser, condense down, drip into this flask here and then the pressure is released through this drying tube here. So theoretically everything should be dry. Stop the water here. No air and water can get back through this way because, well, air can get through but drying tube will strip any water if any air happens to go back through this way. I did want some sort of temperature monitoring this, you know, this piece here like that. Then we could measure the temperature with a thermocouple but this uh, meant that that the condenser would have to sit just a little bit higher. I'm worried about the sulfur chloride refluxing, you know, in here, because like this is the same height as this. If it's, we're distilling off at a higher point than in here, then I'm worried about, you know, this tubing getting very hot and that sort of thing. So, but my, my hope is that if we have a constant flow of chlorine, we'll kind of be pushing stuff out through here rather than having them both at the same temperature. So this will still remain relatively cool because it's got that constant gas flow but um, this will be hot because we're pushing the gas through. Hopefully it works like that. It's a little bit touchy. All right, starting to look pretty molten, climbing the sulfur everywhere. It's a bit cool. We're starting to get our first hints of sulfur chlorides. See, look on the edges there, liquids. Hell yeah. You can see it reacting in the flask kind of there and those sulfur chlorides starting to reflux over that horrifying looking sulfur at the bottom there. One thing this uh, setup doesn't have that I've just realized is it doesn't have a trap. So any of the chlorine that comes out and doesn't react with anything will just come out the end of the drying tube. What I might do to solve both issues of drying and scrubbing is I might replace this with some anhydrous sodium carbonate. Then any chlorine that comes through will react with that as well. But the sodium carbonate will also be a reasonable desiccant for any water coming back the other way. So interesting thing is that you can see those droplets now they're very red before they were quite yellow. If the droplets don't make it over to be distilled and they stay in the atmosphere of chlorine, they'll react further because the yellow is sulfur monochloride, so two sulfur, two chlorine. React with more chlorine further, they become SCL2, so that's two chlorine to one sulfur. And that's red. 
So that yellow to red transition because of extra chlorine really in the flask. And I've accounted for that with the amount of TCCA I've got here. It's like a, a one and a half equivalent to make sulfur dichloride. It's so weird because I've done this a few years ago, a, a couple of times, right? It's been a bit of a, a nemesis for me. And I remember it smelling bad, right? And you have a memory of kind of like, oh, it was bad, but you can't picture in your mind like what it actually really kind of smelled like and it just hit me like the first wave of smell of these sulfur chlorides and bad nostalgia as soon as you get it you're like oh shit i remember it's undeniably sulfur chlorides it's kind of like a tire fire in a sense but more um oh what's it like well i mean the chlorine is mixed in there too it's like a rotting tire fire it's got that kind of like the thickness of a rotting smell together with like the kind of pollution level smell of a tire fire the sulfury kind of like very awful. I might go get my gas mask on. It's actually kind of an ideal day for this. Very windy. It looked like it was going to rain. So <laughs> that's why everything's inside. Ideally, I'd be out there and all the vapors would go away. But there's heaps of wind anyway, so things are okay for the moment. actually a lot less maintenance than I thought it was going to be. It's just doing it by itself. Been doing it for the last half an hour. Drip rate's pretty slow, but it's pretty steady. Oh, we'll wait, for, wait for that drip. There we go. There's a drip. Yeah, the chlorine rate's pretty constant. It's doing exactly what I hoped it did, and the fact that this stuff, this part is staying cool because of the constant flow of chlorine, whereas this has the refluxing sulfur chlorides in it. So even though they're the same height, they're actually different temperatures. Apart from the smell, this is all really quite good. Take a selfie with it. Hell yeah. Living the dream. I'm, I am smiling, it's just there's the gas mask there, so I always look like I'm, I find it. Or am I, or am I frowning, who knows? This is what you see, this is what the sulfur chloride see. Am I having a good time? I mean, that's always debatable, isn't it? All right, distillation has stopped, and for good reason, we're out of sulfur. Stop the HCL edition, HCL. Um, there's still quite a bit of chlorine being generated. Uh, that's looking good, looking good. I'll let it cool down a little and then I'll uh, start taking it apart. So to stop this, uh, I've replaced the acid with some sodium carbonate solution. So now when we add this in, not only will it neutralize the HCl in the flask and stop the chlorine generation, but it will also generate carbon dioxide as it neutralizes it, which should flush the system out of the remaining chlorine because uh, as soon as I start dismantling this, you know, there's chlorine everywhere, but I'll lose the greenish tinge that all the glassware currently has. Here's our final product. Look at this beautiful looking red sulfur chloride. I want to react this with something tomorrow, so all I need to do is keep it for tomorrow. Doug's lab ran a very similar video to this, but what his end product was, was he wanted to do S2Cl2, so he redistilled this over sulfur. What I actually want is I actually want the sulfur dichloride, but tomorrow I'm going to react this with an excess of chlorine to make sure we got the sulfur dichloride, so we don't particularly care about the ratio of sulfur chloride to sulfur dichloride right now. It's very, it's very like thin. You'd expect, I don't know, well I'd expect something like sulfur chlorine compound to be like the thick red liquid, but this is very free flowing even more so than water. Oh, also I did weigh the flask so we can work out a yield from this as well and I'll get that done. All right, our yield is 35.2 grams of sulfur chloride. If we put that into a yield calculation, we end up with either 76% for sulfur dichloride or 115% for a sulfur monochloride. It That tells you that there's a ratio between the two because there's no way we got only a 76% yield based on sulfur because that's all the sulfur that was left. Let me tell you, if there was 30% loss via, well, 25% loss of the sulfur chlorides via just fumes or uh, mechanical losses, I'd know about it. That's a lot of sulfur chlorides to lose and I would have smelt that really, really easily. So, so we didn't lose that much. Really, what we have is a ratio. We've got some amount of sulfur monochloride and some amount of sulfur dichloride. I know I shit on it a lot, but it's actually intriguing as all hell.
Thanks for watching. You can do the cleanup, but it's not too bad. As long as the sulfur chlorides, most of them are poured off of the, the glass where you know, as long as as long as this doesn't like stay with sulfur chlorides once it cools down and then reacts with air. So none of these are really that coated with sulfur and that sort of things. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully things go okay tomorrow. Um, yep, see you next time.